Hi, in this video we'll learn how to solve one step equation involving multiplication and division. I'll show you four examples, two involving multiplication and two involving division. So please watch the video till the end. Now let's take a look at the first example here. I have 3x is equal to 12. In this question, I need to solve this equation for x. That means my main target is to get x by itself to isolate x. Now we need to keep two things in our mind that we have to be fair, whatever we do to one side, we have to do the same thing to the other side as well to balance this equation. The second thing which we need to keep in mind is we always do the opposite operation when we solve the equation. So here you see that x is multiplied by 3 in our equation. x is multiplied by 3. So we know that what is the opposite of multiplication? Well, the opposite of multiplication is going to be division, right? So we're going to divide this by 3 to isolate x to get x by itself. Now if you're doing uh, if we're dividing by 3 on one side, we have to make sure that we do that to the other side as well. So we're going to divide this side by 3 to balance the equation. Okay. Now 3 and 3 is going to cancel out each other because basically 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. And then 1 times x will still give me x, right? So I got x here on the left hand side. I have x by itself. And then 12 divided by 3 is going to give me 4. So what I got is x is equal to 4. Now let's take a look at other example here. I have negative 4x is equal to 36. This problem is similar to this problem. The only difference is we just have a negative sign in front of 4. So here, uh, this is x times negative 4. x is multiplied by negative 4. Now, we know that the opposite of multiplication is division, right? So we know for sure that we have to divide. But do we divide by 4 or do we divide by negative 4? See, if we divide by 4, we're still going to end up with a negative sign in front of x and we won't be able to isolate x, but we need x by itself because that's what that we want to find the value of x, right? So if I just divide by 4, this is not going to work out. I'll still end up with a negative sign in front of x. So what I'm going to do is instead of dividing by 4, I'm going to divide by negative 4. And remember that whatever I do to one side, I have to do the same thing to the other side to balance the equation. So I'm going to divide the other side as well by negative 4. Here, negative 4 and negative 4 is going to cancel out each other. We have x left on the left hand side, which is all we need. And then on the right hand side, I've got 36 divided by negative 4. Just, I'm just going to ignore the negative sign for a minute. 36 divided by 4 will give me 9. And remember that whenever you divide a positive number by a negative number, you always get the negative result. So we're going to put the negative sign. So x is equal to negative 9. Now let's take a look at the other example. This is x over 9 is equal to 3. Now this is a fraction problem. And always remember that fraction is a division problem, right? And we know that the opposite of division is multiplication. Remember that we always do the opposite operation for solving the equations, right? So the opposite, uh, the opposite of division is multiplication. That means I know that I have to multiply something. But what do I multiply here? So I need to find the value of x. I have to get x by itself. So I need to get rid of this 9. So I'm going to multiply by 9, right? Because this way, my 9 and 9 is going to cancel out each other, and I'll only be left with x, right? But remember that whatever I do to one side, I have to do the same operation to the other side as well. So we're going to multiply the other side by 9 as well. And you can always remember that you always multiply by the denominator. If you have a fraction, you multiply by the denominator. Okay, here 9 and 9 is going to cancel out each other. We're only left with x on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I've got 3 times 9, which is going to give me 27. Okay? And you can also think it this way, that 9 divided by 9 is going to give me 1, and 1 times x will still give me x. So that's how I got x here. Okay? Now let's take a look at the other example. I have x over 8 is equal to negative 5. Now, again, this is a fraction problem, and we know that fraction is a division problem, right? And we know that the opposite of division is the multiplication. We are going to do, we're going to multiply here. What do we multiply here? Remember that we always multiply by the denominator because we need to find the value of x, so we need to get rid of this 8. So I'm going to multiply by 8. Now, to make sure whatever I do to the left-hand side, I do that to the other side as well, on the right-hand side. So I'm going to multiply by 8 on both sides to balance my equation. Now here, my 8 and 8 is going to cancel out each other. We're left with x on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I've got negative 5 times 8. Well, negative 5 times 8 is going to give me negative 40 because the product of a positive and negative number is a negative. Right? So we got x equals negative 40. Now let's say if I want to verify whether my answers are correct or not, how do I do that? So let's take, I'm going to show you two 
problems. We're going to verify two problems. I'm not going to do these two, but I'm going to verify these two just to uh, see whether the answer is correct or not. So we got negative 4x is equal to 36. This was my original question, right? Make sure that whatever you got the here we got the value of x is negative 9, right? So we're going to plug in this value back into the original question. Remember that you, you plug in this value back into the original question. So here I have negative 4 and then times x. Well, what is the value of x? x is equal to negative 9. So I'm going to plug in this value to see if that works or not. So I'm going to put the negative sign inside the parentheses because I have a two negative signs. I'm, um, just, just to avoid confusion, I'm going to put this in parentheses. This should be equal to 36. Let's say 4 times 9. Well, that's give me, that will give me 36. Okay, negative times negative. Always remember the product of two negative numbers is always positive. I'm not going to put the positive side in front of it. So this is 36 because negative 4 times negative 9 will give me 36. And 36 is obviously equal to 36. So my equation is true, right? That means my answer is absolutely correct. If I get the wrong equation, I mean, if this equation is false, let's say if the left-hand side is not equal to the right-hand side, let's say if I got 32 on the left-hand side and 36 on the right-hand side, then this will be false. That means there's something wrong with my answer. So I'm going to redo it and then verify my answer again. Okay, let's take a look at this example now. My original question was x over 9 is equal to 3. This was my original question, right? I'm going to plug this value. I got x equals 27. I'm going to plug this value back into my question again. So x is equal to 27. I'm going to plug in 27. So this is 27 divided by 9. This should be equal to 3. If you get equal, a left-hand side and right-hand side equal, then we're going to say that our answer is absolutely correct, okay? So 27 divided by 9, well, that's going to give me 3, and 3 is equal to 3. So this equation is also true. So we can say that our answer is absolutely correct. That's how you can uh, verify whether your answer is correct or not. Okay, that's all for this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video is helpful for you. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next video.